Good day, everyone. It is a pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of the Biodiversity Finance MOOC team to our sixth webinar. This course is offered by the United Nations Development Programme Biodiversity Finance Initiative, or BIOFIN, in partnership with the UNDP Global Programme on Nature Development, the NBSAP Forum, the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity, and the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. Financial support is provided by the governments of the European Union, Flanders, Norway, Germany, and Switzerland, and the GEF. My name is Tracy Cumming, and I will be your facilitator today. We are very grateful for your participation in this webinar on biodiversity finance plans. I will be giving you a presentation on the methodology. I myself am the technical advisor as part of the Global Biofin team. I cover countries in Asia and Africa. I'd also like to greet all the participants that have joined, um, both greeting you to this webinar and also greeting some of the names I'm seeing, I've been seeing on our discussion forums, and it's really great to see your names popping up here again. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, today's MOOC will be on the Biodiversity Finance Plan. So the aim of a Biodiversity Finance Plan is to set out a roadmap for biodiversity finance at a country level. It encompasses a complementary suite of priority solutions that can be implemented over the short to medium term. For those of you that have worked with, with national plans in biodiversity, it's, it's useful to think of the biodiversity finance plan as something similar to the NBSAP. So the NBSAP is a national plan for biodiversity across the country for the short to medium term, and the biodiversity finance plan is a similar type of document, but focusing specifically on biodiversity finance. If you've gone through the workbook or you've um, looked through the lesson already, you'll know that there are seven steps that we set out for developing the biodiversity finance plan. I am going to be focusing predominantly on two of those steps today because we don't have time to go through everything. But these are the two steps that we find tend to need the most attention when we work with countries and tend to be really important. If you want more information on all the other steps, the MOOC lesson will give you this and the workbook will give you this. So first up, um, I want to focus on where you draw on information for the biodiversity finance plan. And as, um, as you should know by now, I hope that that image on the side of the slide there is very familiar to you. The biodiversity finance plan is the fourth component of developing these um, biodiversity finance strategies for a country. So by now, at a country level, you should have done your policy and institutional review, you should have done your biodiversity expenditure review, and your finance needs assessment. All of these documents should help you in coming up with a broad list of potential finance solutions for your country. For example, your policy and institutional review should set out the legal and institutional context within which to operate and may have already indicated opportunities within the legal and institutional space. The finance need assessment should indicate where major cost drivers will be to meet the country's biodiversity targets. For instance, in some countries, protected area expansion might be by far the most expensive thing that a country needs to look at over the next 10 years. In other countries, it might be something like ecosystem restoration. When you have a feeling of this, you then know that you should be looking at finance solutions that aim to support that particular area of work. Your biodiversity expenditure review should be identifying challenges in funding flows or extreme fluctuations in expenditure across years. And that could also point to some potential finance solutions for your country. For example, you might have a country where there's a very heavy reliance on international donor money, and that is fluctuating greatly, and that influences how biodiversity is being managed over years. If that is the case, your BER should bring that up. And as you start pulling together finance solutions, you should be looking to find finance solutions that help to even out funding flows for the country and maybe bring some more mechanisms in that allow for national level finance rather than international finance. Of course, all three documents aren't necessarily enough. So as you're developing the biodiversity finance plan, you should be spending a lot of time with stakeholders and with experts to understand what the broad suite of potential finance solutions are for the country 
and for prioritizing them and developing them further. So I'm going to jump ahead, skip a step. So you've now looked at your all your background documents, you've spoken to experts, you've spoken to stakeholders, and you've developed this big comprehensive list of potential finance solutions. And now you need to prioritize them. So that's the next really important step I want to focus on. You've got this list of finance solutions that should be achieving at least one or more of the following outcomes. Delivering better, generating revenues, realigning expenditures, or avoiding future expenditure. You then need to go through two levels of screening. The first is a rapid screening process and the second is a more detailed screening process. When we do this at a project level in countries, we tend to find that we are starting with around 50 or up to even 200 finance solutions in that very, very broad list. Your rapid screening process should bring you down to 15 to 50 realistic finance solutions and your more detailed screening process should bring you down to 5 to 15 finance solutions that would then go into your biodiversity finance plan. Your rapid screening has three different criteria. One of them is on the impact on biodiversity, the other is your financial impact, and the other one is likelihood of success. Each of these should be giving you a score of one, zero, sorry, zero to four for each potential finance solution. So if we focus on the impact on biodiversity criteria, that should be considering the impact on species, ecosystems, and ecosystem services. Your financial impact should be considering the scale of the financial impact, including savings and mobilized resources. So just a reminder, finance solutions aren't necessarily only about generating new revenue. They could be about um, saving fun funding. Um, and then your likelihood of success is a criteria that could, should consider political, social, um, practical factors. If this, is this scalable? Is it commercially viable? Um, sometimes you find a finance solution that might have great impact on biodiversity and potentially huge um, financial impact, but it's really, really complex. And that should then get a low score for this likelihood of success. Or it's politically utterly unpalatable. And again, that should then get a low score. So here is an example of a rapid screening process scoring sheet um, from one of our earlier countries. If you have a look at it right on the left hand side, you have the very broad category. I know this is small, so I'll read it out. Um, that, that is biodiversity offsets, the top one. We then name the mechanism. And there you need to be quite specific on what the actual finance solution is in that country context. And I will delve into that a little bit more as we go through these slides. It's then followed by a description of what that actual, actual finance solution would entail in that specific country. And then we move into those um, columns of green, which is potential for biodiversity impact, the financial impact, and the political, and likely, political feasibility and likelihood of success. As you can see, each finance solution has given a score between zero and four and then these are all added up to a total which is a total out of 12 and we then have two potential score cutoff points so in this country we had a nine as a cutoff and a stricter score cutoff of a 10 and that allowed us to see we wanted to get enough finance solutions into the more um, detailed screening process so we had a look at what gets cut off at nine what gets cut off at 10 and then we selected the top finance solutions to then move into the more detailed screening process. So the detailed screening process has 20 questions. Each has the same score of zero to four. And each of them you could probably categorize under those same three categories that you had in the rapid screening, but they're much more detailed questions and they tend to require um, more detailed understanding of each finance solution. I have just four examples of these questions, but all 20 of them will be in the workbook if you want to have a look. So one of the questions is, will the financial resources remain targeted to biodiversity over time? Another one is, will financing sources be mobilized at timeline compatible with needs? There is a question on, will there be a social and economic positive impact? such as job creation, poverty reduction, or improved cultural activities. 
And another example is, do the managing actors have sufficient capacity to influence this finance solution? And if not, can they rapidly acquire it? So that then speaks to almost a practical side of whether this finance solution would work or not. To do this detailed screening, you really need to engage with experts on each finance solution who have a reasonable understanding of the actual mechanism and of the country context. You can't answer these questions if you don't have the right experts in the room. The way we do this, um, we could do it through questionnaires. Sometimes that's worked, sometimes not so much. Uh, you could do it with workshops. Um, and I think one-on-one -on -one interviews are really good. What we found is very broad workshops aren't necessarily the best way to do this because you're bringing in a bunch of experts into the room who have very particular detailed understanding of individual things. So it tends to not be good as a very broad conversation. You need to get into very detailed conversations on each finance solution quite rapidly. So you find one-on-one -on -one interviews can be very useful. At the end of this prioritized screening, you should have five to 15 finance solutions. Now here's something I've kind of dropped in occasionally as that I want to stress it with its very own screen. You cannot screen or prioritize finance solutions if you do not have specific and sufficient information about each proposed finance solution. Just to give you an example of what I mean by this. If your finance solution is a national pay system for water in the country, you cannot, you cannot screen it. That's not nearly enough information. So here's some text as an example from one of our countries as what they described as a finance solution that could then be held up against those 20 questions for, for screening. Amending national legislation, and the name of the act would go in there, to allow for 1.5% of domestic, industrial, and agricultural water user fees to be channeled directly to the National Environmental Fund and used specifically for catchment management, specifically ecosystem restoration and protection in identifying key water sources. Once the legislation is amended, institutional structures will be set up to ensure the effective allocation and expenditure as well as monitoring and evaluation of these financial resources. Now that is a finance solution that you can then analyze against all those questions to see if it is viable or not in the country. So I hope that makes sense on the level of detail that's needed to be able to screen these finance solutions. And that also should show how you can't really go into the detailed screening when you have 50 finance solutions, because there's almost too much work that's needed to be able to answer questions for 50 different finance solutions. So once you have your five to 15 finance solutions that have been prioritized, you would develop technical proposals for each of them and how they would be implemented, what the timelines are, who the stakeholders are, and you would make the case for the investment in every finance solution. That would be the business case, the biodiversity case, how is this important, and also expected finance results. Once you've got that, you write your biodiversity finance plan that captures these prioritized finance solutions for the country for the next five to 10 years. That is it from me on the, on the broad methodology.